In this segment, I'd like to describe the word morphophonemic rules. Uh, we can see them right here in the grammar tree. In previous segments, we've looked out, we've looked at spellout rules, which are able to pro perform morphophonemic operations across morpheme boundaries. And we've also seen the lexical spellout rules. They have the ability to perform morphophonemic operations across morpheme boundaries. Now, these rules that we're going to look at in this segment these rules perform morphophonemic operations across word boundaries. And uh, they have to come after the phrase structure rules because these rules can only be executed after the phrase structure rules have put all of their constituents in their proper order. And to, to see an example, I'd like to go to uh, Luke 111. Uh, you'll notice sometimes it's convenient to go into single sentence mode when you want to focus on just one small part of a particular verse. And in the, this, this verse, we have the concept angel, and I've linked it to the English equivalent. And if we generate this verse right now, we will see a angel. And we don't care about the rest of this verse. We're going to write a word morphophonemic rule that will change this indefinite article a to an when the next word begins with a vowel. So let's double click on this and we're prompted to enter a group name. We'll call it articles. I double click on this name. Now we want this rule to be triggered by articles. Um, we have several articles like the and some. We want this rule to be triggered by just one article. So we click on the trigger word and we see our, the list of articles. Now it'll be triggered by just this one article. And uh, okay, we want the environment word to follow the affected word. This is the environment word in this case, angel. And we want to specify the environment word with alphabetic characters. So we'll say A, E, I, O, and U. The affected word, right now it's A. We want to change that to an. Down here we'll say an angel. And I don't know what the rest of this verse is saying. For our grammar topic, uh, let's enter a new topic called morphophonemics. OK, and let's add a name for this rule change A to N, and the next word begins with a vowel. OK, now if we initialize the verse and click Generate, now we see an angel. And if we rest our cursor here, we see that A was changed to N by the, the rule that we just wrote. Now let's change that rule so that it uses phonetic features. Sometimes it's convenient to use alphabetic characters like this to specify the environment, but other times we want to use phonetic features. So we're going to say for the environment word, specify with phonetic features. Now this, these, this grid contains five cells. These five cells represent the first five characters of the environment word. So this leftmost cell is the first character of the environment word. And if we click on here, uh, so far I've only defined one phonetic feature for this demo target language. So we need to define another feature for a vowel. So we can click on the phonetic features button. And we're going to say new feature, vowel. This will have two values. Uh, we want to put our, our most commonly used value first. It will be the default value. Most characters in our alphabet aren't vowels, so we're going to say no. Down here we'll say yes. So they're all assigned no. Now we need to go through and for the vowels, change this to yes. And 
that's, that's all of the vowels in the Roman alphabet. So we'll say OK. And now, when we click on this cell, we'll say vowel, we'll say yes. So now A will change to N whenever the next word begins with a vowel. Let's save it, and we'll initialize our verse and generate it again. And again, we see an angel, but this time we're using phonetic features. You can use uh, phonetic features to specify the, the trigger word as well. In this case, these five cells represent the last five characters of the trigger word. And here we can specify a change uh, in the environment, in, in the affected word. So this space right here represents the word boundary. We can say the environment, environment word precedes the affected word. So now this is the end of the environment word, and now this is the beginning of the affected word. Uh, but we don't want to do that. We want to leave it like this. Uh, okay, the environment word we want phonetic features, vowel, yes. For the trigger word, we want alphabetic characters. There we go. So we're back to how it was. And that concludes this segment.